grace, peace, and welcome. So first of all, geraniums for Memorial Day can be ordered for pickup or to be planted at church. Forms are available on the Altar Guild page of the website or in the weekly email blast. Uh, orders must be received by May 16th. Secondly, uh, a new Bible study is starting up this Sunday, so this afternoon um, at 2 o'clock. Uh, it'll also be taking place on Thursdays at 7 o'clock, so the similar setup that we've been doing. Um, so if you'd like to participate, please contact the, the office and we'll get the Zoom link to you. Um, and a little bit about the Bible study, it is about suffering. And now it's not that your pastor's morbid or something here, but instead that uh, all of us have been collectively experiencing something very particular, and I think it's worth uh, taking some time both to look at sort of the pastoral end of things. So a couple of the sessions will be about uh, everything from compassion fatigue to, um, to sort of the different uh, ways to think about the grieving process because, you know, that, that model that you just sort of have these stages doesn't always fit together because, in fact, sometimes it's a wave, that kind of thing. Anyway, all that to say, so that there's going to be kind of a pastoral side of it, but then also there's going to be a Bible side of it. So we're going to read the entirety of the Book of Lamentations, for example, just in a really swift uh, go there. We'll also be uh, looking at what wisdom literature has to say about, uh, about suffering, and we're going to kind of wrap it up with the question of, uh, you know, the big why question, uh, leaving it as a question, but uh, letting us kind of think that through and feel that through in a different way than maybe we did at the start of the five weeks. So please contact the office if you are interested in joining us for that. Finally, uh, please check your email for the congregational survey that uh, we're sending out to get a sense of where people are at regarding vaccination, safety, in-person worship, um, all of that. So please uh, scour your email, bo uh, email box if you haven't gotten that. Uh, that'll be coming to you shortly. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! In the beginning, before the beginning, there was only chaos and emptiness, no light, literally no ground to stand upon, alone and without life. But God created all that is, seen and unseen, and has declared it good, light, a firm foundation, life. At the river's edge, Pharaoh's chariots hounded us. We were penned in, there was no escape. The seas have parted. We find ourselves safe on the other side. We are freed. We are sore, working mightily for no pay, away in a strange land, where can we turn? O oh, tired ones, eat what is good, delight in the richness on offer, turn to the Lord. It is claustrophobic, it is loud, the heat of the fiery furnace raises our blood pressure and adrenaline. Find comfort, the Lord is with us in the furnace with us, so that we will come out unharmed. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! Let's
Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 A reading from 1 John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do, you, do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Oh, my God, I'm king. I'm trying. 
grace, peace, and mercy to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. You are witnesses of these things. Mary, you and your sisters at the tomb, encountering it empty, the bottom dropped out of your soul, they stole him. And then he called you by name, and you went to proclaim that he is risen. You are witnesses of these things, Peter and the beloved disciple, your famed foot race to the tomb and eventual reconciliation with the Lord. The good news given to you, he is risen. You are witnesses of these things. Thomas, dear Thomas, left alone without a companion, chastened by your siblings until you saw, you felt, you touched, you knew he is risen. You are witnesses of these things, Cleopas and friend, walking sad to Emmaus, speaking with a stranger, eating with him. In the breaking of the bread, it was revealed, he is risen. You are witnesses of all these things. All of you, once scattered, now gathered together, even as you gather the story all together, describing to one another your encounters with our risen Lord, witnessing to each other about the resurrection. Perhaps Thomas witnessing to Mary, Cleopas to Peter, all of those four to James and Martha and the rest witnessing to these people you know so well and who yet are now strangers in a way. You are strangers to one another now because you're different on the other side. Judas gone, Peter denies, Thomas doubts, rivalries bubble back up that had been resolved in the person of Jesus when you were following him. Simply put, the fellowship is fractured and you are each face to face with who you, you've become, who you've become without him, who you've become without him. But not for long. The sweet redemption of all these things, it's sprouting forth like a fruitful tree. These stories, the way you testify to each other about Jesus' actions on the other side, the other side of the grave, witnessing to the resurrected Messiah. You witness, and then you look, and there he is. There he is among you, the Lord. You are witnesses of these things. In the face of Good Friday and the lonely tomb, he is your peace. You are witnesses of these things. The resurrection is more than an idle tale. He is true, he is flesh, he is blood, he is before you. You are witnesses of these things, those quiet echoes of Scripture that you heard when he was with you, the ways he's leading you, you forward was continually faithful to the word that you knew and you loved. Continue as well to resonate and resound these words of God and are now a song so sweet you sing it in a new key. You are witnesses of these things. Sent from Jerusalem to Galilee to Samaria to Ethiopia and Greece and Rome and onward to all the world. That the world, our poor world, might know 
see itself as it is and seek and find forgiveness. Repentance that leads to forgiveness. You are witnesses of these things. Not just the folk back in history, not the church of late, but the church of present as well. You, right here, right there, right there, you, yeah, I'm talking to you on the other side of that, uh, that camera. He is risen from the dead. The good news begun on Easter is an ongoing unveiling, a continual unrolling of revelation and the revelation of the resurrection. The risen one is among us as we tell his story, as we live in ways that point to new life, among us in the redemption of all that is alienated from God. All you who've heard the word and heard his calling, all of you marked with the cross and fed with the bread of life, you are witnesses of these things. You are a witness. Point them to the profound peace of Christ that calms your inner storms. You are a witness there is a world groaning on account of death's assaults. Show them life. You are a witness. Scripture and the Spirit continually speak of our Lord and point to Him and do so not in vain. Speak up as well, you too. Speak alongside the Spirit and speak alongside Scripture as all together we point to Him. You are a witness, not to offer judgment or demand commands, but good news, right? The good news, the gospel must be good news or it's not heard at all and it's in fact not good news. The good news that leads to forgiveness. Because that's one of the things that the NRSV gets wrong in its translation of Luke today. It's not forgiveness and, pardon, it's not repentance and forgiveness. It's per repentance that leads to forgiveness. Right? So all that we do as Christians, the way that we witness to the world, must be good news to the world, must move the world in such a way that it leads to forgiveness, leads to right relationships, leads to reconciliation. You are witnesses of these things. Amen and Alleluia. Let us confess together the story of God's work in the world as found in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, 
We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Living God, in the midst of Easter joy, we are still filled with questions and wondering. Open our hearts and minds as we encounter the scriptures so that the church embodies repentance and forgiveness in the name of Jesus to all nations. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, like a master artist, you have fashioned the universe out of your love and delight. Heal your creation where it is in need of restoration. Provide all the inhabitants of earth a peaceful and sustainable home. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all, the nations hunger and thirst for your righteousness. Many call on you for guidance and strength. Answer their hopes with the peace of Christ and give your loving kindness to national, state, and local leaders of people. Watch over those who serve in the military, especially Sammy, Daniel, Joshua, Marshall, Nicholas, Cooper, Justin, and Devin. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, you hear the cries of those in need and answer them in their distress. Grant to those who are sick and suffering your compassion and nurse them back to health and wholeness, especially Lance, Irwin, Bill, Satsuka, Bonnie, Walter, Robert, Julia, Dave, Clarence, Rich. Be close to the hearts of the lonely. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving parent, you have given us such love that we should be called the children of God. Reveal yourself to us that we in this community of faith will become more and more like you in our mutual love and bold witness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all times and ages, those who have died in you now see you as you are. We thank you for their lives among us, especially Susan. Beth, assure us of the peace you have promised, that we may join them in everlasting life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.